Well, it is time now for your Premier League update. As we say hello there, I'm Cara Banks alongside Tim Howard and Danny Higginbotham. Guys, what a match that was. I don't think we could have expected what was about to unfold. First of all, let's speak about the controversial mm. VAR decision. The red card seemed questionable. Was it a red card, Tim, for Alan? Uh, big controversy. No, it wasn't. And when you, and you watch Alan here, number six, in St. Maximum, there's a coming together, there's a tackle, absolutely. Referee Craig Paulson, I think, gets it right here. He gives he gives the yellow card. That seems to be enough. When you watch the tackle, does he lunge? Yes. Is there excessive force? Maybe. Brutality? No. That's what constitutes serious foul play in a red card. I don't think this action is worthy of that. Craig Paulson gets called over to the video monitor. He sees a still picture. Even in this still picture, there's not really, the studs aren't, aren't showing. He catches it with the inside of the foot. Yeah, it's a little bit clumsy and reckless, and, there, and there's some there's some force in it, sure. But it doesn't tick all the boxes for me, and I, I don't think it should have for Craig Paulson. This this is a good picture here. It's the inside of his boot. It's not it's not a two-footed challenge. But Craig Paulson takes away the yellow card, issues a red card, and it's a huge, huge turning point in the game. Yeah, we know Danny VAR has not been kind to Everton. Just think about what happened when they hosted City last month. But ultimately, a goal changes everything. It, it does. And the one thing that, you know, we, we, we spoke about before the game, we spoke about character, we talk about desire, determination, commitment. This was what Everton did. In that second half, going down to 10 minutes, his great play initially from Awobi, who's had his fair share of criticism, criticism since joining the club, but he could have scored one of the most important goals since he joined the club. You see, he links up really well with Dominic Calvert-Lewin, and it's a good strike. Dubravka's going towards his right, so he can't readjust to make the save. But not just the goal, the fact that they're down to 10 men and the way that the players came together, that will give so much confidence and belief in amongst that group. And you can see what it means to Frank Lampard. He's been waiting for this moment and he got it against all the odds. It was ultimately a super night for Super Frank. He's been needing desperately a victory like this, Tim. You know what it's like to, to be on the pitch when you yeah. have a red card incident like there was. How proud are you of how Everton reacted to being down to 10 men? Well, I, I think that there are turning points and moments mm. in seasons. It may, have, it may have come a little bit late for Everton, but this must be. I mean, you look at the joy and you look at the celebrations, you look at the relief, not just from Frank Lampard and his staff, not just the players, but from the fans as well. That was a gritty, determined performance. Sloppy, yes, but you know what, Danny, you can attest to this. Who cares? <laughs> at this point in time, yeah. get the three points. And in fairness... Which what we've been talking about. It's what Frank Lampard talked about after they got beat heavily against Tottenham. Mm. Where's the characters? Who's going to step up? One of their midfield generals gets sent off. Can, can the players step up? They showed that tonight. Who did step up tonight? I think in general, the, the, the whole of the team did after that. I think one of the things that I said after the, the Tottenham defeat is that Frank Lampard will have learned a lot about his plays in this defeat. He will have learned even more mm -hmm. in the 10 minutes of regular of regular play without Alan and then the injury time because the players then had an excuse. They had an excuse to get beat. They had an excuse to say, oh, it shouldn't be a red card. Everybody's against us. You've mentioned, obviously, what happened against Manchester City. That's a choice. You can do that if you want. Everton players didn't. They were like, OK, you know what? We've got to deal with this. We've got to brush ourselves down and we've got to get a win from this. And they did. And, Tim, you know better than me. That's all the Everton fans want to see. Yeah. That's all I want to see. And I look at the performances. Begovic, we talked about before the game, having only played one game, he stood out for me. Really, really good performance. Captain Seamus Coleman. I mean, you saw it there. He was nearly in mm -hmm. tears. And that's what, that's what you want. That's what you want from an Everton team. And, and I thought, again, Calvert-Lewin came on. Didn't give them a lot of minutes, but he, he got the assist from Awobi. Awobi was fantastic on the day. Gordon, which we know. Lampard, you've mentioned. Lampard loves him, his, his endeavor. He's, he's probably the most talented footballer they have on the team. They kept going. Richarlison threw himself around the entire game, which is what we hope and expect from him if you're an Everton, if you're an Everton fan or if you're an Everton manager. They had attracted criticism. They'd been mm -hmm. called a disgrace after the loss mm -hmm. to Wolves on Sunday. Lampard answered it, saying the players have to answer that themselves yeah. on the pitch. They did so tonight. How much confidence should they gain, for, gain from this victory? A lot, because losing becomes a habit. And it's very, very difficult to get rid of that habit. And then winning becomes a habit. And this is the first time, you know, in, in, in general, they've not really had that feeling enough. But what they will do, the players will go in the dressing room, Frank Lampard will say to his players that will all be in there, absolutely worn out from this. But they've given everything. But Frank Lampard will turn around to his players, as many managers have, have said to myself, I'm sure Tim, Tim as well, bottle that. 
Bottle this feeling mm. and remember when you step on the pitch next time, you want this feeling again mm. at the end of the game. And if they can do that, and if they can go about things that in the manner in which they did in the, in the, in the latter parts of that game, they will stay up. The question marks were the character, not the ability. Yeah, and, and what, what it will do for them is when you're a footballer, you, you have, oftentimes you have a week in between games. That can either be a dreary time mm. or an exciting time. When you lose matches and you're on the run that Everton was on, it's hard to get yourself out of bed and onto the training ground because you just know there's not a nice feeling. They will feel, albeit it's one, it's one win, they will feel so high from this win that training over the next couple of days will be inspired, it will be spirited, taking that into the next game because the blueprint is there. Be tough to beat it to back, try and keep a clean sheet, and eventually find a way to win, sloppy or not. Mm -hmm. And I think, I go back to my time at Stoke, we had a relegation fight, but in the middle of it, we had a great FA Cup run. That's where Everton are at now. And it's something that's like, right, put the Premier League to the side for a little bit. Let's go enjoy. Let's go and enjoy the quarterfinals now of the FA Cup. You're in that position now. And it's something now for players to, and fans to get excited about. Something different than a relegation fight. This was, and I stand by it, this was a must-win game. They did it, but the manner in which they did it, it will feel like six points instead of three. They should be proud of what they did tonight, and they did it one man down. Just lastly, Tim, so much is made of Lampard's leadership. What decisions did he make today that helped produce this victory? Well, I think it was, it was not so much the tactical decision, but, but more than likely what he said in the dressing room behind closed doors because that was an inspired performance. OK, well, let's hear from a couple of the Everton winning players. First of all, the goal scorer, Alex Iwobi, but first, Everton captain Seamus Coleman. Seamus, Alex, congratulations. You've been in the changing room there. Seamus, what's it like in there right now? No, listen, it's a great atmosphere. You know, a lot of us have been questioned, you know, the last couple of weeks, and, you know, rightly so, when performances have been poor. But, you know, um, we, we have good characters in there, and, listen, the, the league this season has been disappointing. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, we put a lot into this week, and, uh, you know, just mighty relief. And, you know, I know it's a cliche, but you've got to enjoy it tonight and forget about it tomorrow and move on to the next game. It was a game lacking in quality, but the man provided, beside you, provided the one moment of quality, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And again, it doesn't surprise me. You know, we, um, we had to question ourselves a lot this week. And if you'd have seen this man training two days ago, the attitude, the application, you know, the desire, which ended up getting him in the team. And, you know, them things don't just happen by chance goals like that. That's fully deserved by Alex, and, uh, and I couldn't be happier for him. Alex, the manager showed faith in you by putting you in the starting 11. How important was it for you to repay that faith? Yeah, I mean, I try my best. I always give 100%. Obviously, we want to get as many good results as possible, but my job is just to give 100%, and that's what we we're trying to achieve uh, for the rest of the season. How difficult was it with the game being of such a stop-start nature? Um, yeah, it is difficult when there's a lot of situations going on, but we're professional footballers. We have to have the elite mindset. When you have him, he's always getting on to us to stay focused. We have no choice but to do so, and as we were able to get the result, it didn't affect us, so it's good. Seamus, you really needed that focus when you went down to 10 men as well. What was your view on that? I didn't think it was a red card. I don't know what the view from, from your... Listen, it was a lunge and it was it was lit, but like he's not really caught him from what I've seen. Like it's not like his studs catch him right bang in the ankle. So for me I didn't think it was a red card. Um a few other decisions tonight I thought were a bit iffy, but I think the red card in particular I didn't think it was a red card. That atmosphere at the end, you need to bottle that now, don't you, to keep that going forward and, and keep the survival push going. Yeah, of course. And again, you know, we've been guilty in the past of getting a good result and you know getting a bit sloppy then come the next game and we can't let that happen you know we're fighting every week now and um, you know a lot be said about ever fans getting your back and all this uh, from from the outside if you've seen that atmosphere today how they pushed us along so we've got we've got them in our corner as well so we just got to keep moving we've got I think maybe seven six home games left between now and the end of the season so you know recover tomorrow and move on. Alex, the players are being questioned, the manager's being questioned as well. Does that help him a little bit? Um, no, obviously it comes with football, so we know what to expect from the outside, but we don't listen to that. We focus on ourselves, we know the quality and the ability we have. So as long as we're able to show it and prove to ourselves, first and foremost, that's the main thing. That belief is there now, this club is staying up, staying in the Premier League. Yeah, that's the aim. We have that mindset and we have to keep on going, but it's game by game. All right, let's get to full highlights. And Everton had a chance early, Tim. Yeah, they did. It started really well in the fourth minute from a corner from Gray. Godfrey gets up. It's good contact on him. You see from the replay, Damper just edges him out enough so that it takes some of the contact off it. It's an easy save in the end for Dubrovka. But unfortunately for Everton, Newcastle got going. Gimaresh here slides a nice ball down the side to Kraft, who puts it in a dangerous area. But well done from Mason Holgate. 
to protect the goal there. And again, Gimoresh on the ball with time and space. It's a lovely little cross field pass and it finds its way into the box. Everton couldn't stop the crosses. Chris Wood, really good contact. He would have been hoping to get that left or right of Begovic in the end. It's a pretty comfortable save there from Begovic. And it's called upon again. Great punch from the Everton goalkeeper, Falls Almiron. And you'll see from the replay, it doesn't get really good contact on it. Just kind of scuffs it there at the end. And it goes safely away from the danger. And Danny, Newcastle kept pushing at the start of the second half. It didn't. And one thing they do at times, Newcastle, when they go long, they will get midfield runners that will get up and support. And it's exactly what, what Willock does here. He follows the run. It goes from Wood to him. He just can't get a better angle to get the strike. It was always going to be a difficult one because the ball ends up being behind him from, from Chris Wood's header there. He manages to get on the shot on target, but not enough to trouble, uh, to trouble Begovic. And then as the game went on, Everton started to ask a few, a few more questions themselves. You know, Gray gets in a really good position. This is great play from Coleman. Being on the front foot, winning those second balls. When the ball comes in then to Gray, he's just not able to get his body over the ball. The ball doesn't come down quick enough for him. And when it leaves his feet, unfortunately, from Everton's perspective, it's always rising. We just see it once again here. He's just waiting and waiting, but he can't take too long. And as he hits it, like I say, it's always rising. And then a chance for Newcastle. It's Dan Burn. He wins the header. I don't think he had any intention of heading it back towards that way, but Kraft gets a good strike on it. And I think what makes this save better from Begovic, it looks comfortable enough, but it bounces just in front of him. You just see as Kraft hits it here, just bounces just in front of him, can make it a little bit awkward, but Begovic makes it look comfortable enough. And then another chance for Newcastle, once again the midfield runners. It's great play from Almiron. You just see he's going one-on-one -on -one with Godfrey. He's a really good defender, but he just gets the better of him. If anything, Godfrey just slips there. And then what happens is he has a presence of mind just to play the ball back to Gimerish. And then Wood, who had been flagged for offside, when we see the replay, I don't think if the ball does go into the back end, it obviously doesn't matter now, but Wood wouldn't be offside. But it's good play from Almiron. And Gimaresh gets himself into a good position. You clearly see that Godfrey would be playing Wood on, but it doesn't really matter because Everton are able to clear their lines. And ends up being a really good save from Begovic. And the play's going straight up to him as well because he's played very, very rarely. And he's got his opportunity and he's taking it with both hands, so to speak. And then Everton once again get an opportunity. It's Gordon who takes the initial corner. And then when the ball eventually goes out to him, he's only got one thing in his mind. He just gets the ball and he drives inside. And he's been Everton's best player in recent games. Just everything about him. And it's a wonderful save from Debrat because, because that was heading for the top corner. And it was a save that needed to be made. Gordon really got this Everton team going and then obviously we go to the major talking point of the game Ever uh, Newcastle looking to get on the breakaway and you've got St Maximum here and you see the foul and Craig Porter initially gives a yellow card for me that's the right decision no problem whatsoever you don't see too many Everton players going over and complaining and then once again you see the challenge from Alan we see this week in week out in games and we do see yellow cards and it is it's a poor challenge it is reckless but the one thing I would say which constitutes it not being a red card from my side of things as Craig Porter goes over to see it is that it's not excessive force I don't understand I don't see any excessive force in here but obviously Craig Porson decides that there's enough in it. He obviously then takes a look at the video screen, which at times when things are slowed down, you know, things can look a lot worse than they actual are, actually are. And we see it again here. It is reckless, no question about it from Alan. But excessive force, I don't see any excessive force in it whatsoever. You see the Everton players, Richarlison and Coleman. Coleman, you can't believe what he's about to see. And Craig Clawson takes the yellow card away and gives a red card instead to Alan. And Alan's obviously frustrated about it. And as he goes down, he tells my Dean all about it. Well, it was the major talking point, obviously, until nine minutes into stoppage time. This happened to him. Yeah, and cue the drama. Because Everton, you can see there, even though they, they have ten men, they're doing well to get the ball. They win it back. And when it comes to Wolby here, he has an eye for a goal. Just drives forward, continues his run, combines with Cavaloon. And lovely little left-footed strike gets good contact on it. Dubrovka's weight going the wrong way. You can see the celebration. But this was impressive from Everton. Down 10 men late in the game to be able to still press the ball this way. And Calvert Lewin, lovely little one-two there. Just a reverse pass. And it's beautiful to see if you're an Everton fan. Because this is what you were hoping and expecting. That energy, that quality. And I've got to say, it's just a lovely little finish with his left foot. And you can see what it means to Frank Lampard. 
Said it wasn't a must win, but that tells me a different story. Huge reaction from Frank and his team. Relief, I'm sure, at securing another three points, a much needed three points as they linger just outside the relegation zone. Big night for him, big night for Bill Kenwright, the chairman, of course, at Everton. Huge victory at home at Goodison Park tonight. So with that result, let's take a look again, a live look at the bottom half of the table. Newcastle, you can see, still in 14th, nine points above the relegation zone. Everton, this result, massive. They remain in 17th, but now have a cushion. Three points above the bottom three, which still consists of Watford, Burnley and Norwich. And that was your Premier League update. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.